obviously I am a white guy. But even though I'm a white guy, I can tell you with 100% certainty that if I took an afternoon and engaged in exactly the same actions that Mike Brown engaged in on that fateful day, I too would have been shot dead by a police officer. And I would have deserved to be. I would remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. America's evil genius, Travis Cook, back with you once again. And now that we've had a, we're a couple of weeks into this whole Ferguson, Missouri thing, this whole controversy, and it seems to have settled down a little bit. We're no longer seeing rioting and looting every single night on the news. Now it's just a couple of times a week. Uh, now that it's uh, settled down a little bit, I think it's a good opportunity for us all to take a step back and reacquaint ourselves with what's really important in this story, what's really important in this situation. Because what I've noticed is that over the last couple of weeks, a lot of other people have come in, a lot of people have glommed on to this Michael Brown issue, they've glommed on to Ferguson, Missouri, with their pet issue, their pet cause, and have tried to attach it to Ferguson. And have tried to say that their pet cause is the reason that all of this happened, the reason that Mike Brown was shot, the reason there was rioting, the reason there was looting, and all of this. And so it's, t it's turned out that we've talked about a lot of issues over the last couple of weeks that really had absolutely nothing to do with the events of that fateful afternoon. So I wanted to take a moment and just get ourselves back in touch with that and remind everybody of what issues and what items did not lead to the issues in Ferguson. Now, first of all, the bottom line is that however you want to phrase this, whatever emotion you want to put into it, the facts are this. A guy robbed a liquor store of some cigars. And when that guy was later spotted by a police officer walking in the middle of the street, which, by the way, is illegal, and that officer called him on it, that young man did not cooperate. He attacked the police officer by most accounts. At the very least, there was a physical uh, altercation and forced police officer to defend himself. That's what we know. Those are the facts on the ground. And even so, a lot of people are going beyond those facts and trying to attach blame to all sorts of other issues and use all sorts of other issues as explanations for what happens. In other words, instead of taking the most obvious uh, facts that we have, they, they want to try and complicate this far more than it need be complicated. But yet a lot of people want to blame a lot of things for what happened in Ferguson beyond just those facts that we established. We have people going around crying about disparities and police stops in Ferguson. Well, we dealt, we dealt with that on our last show, by the way, if you want to go back and look at it, if you haven't seen it. You know, there might be disparities in uh, blacks being stopped by police or, or having interactions with police, but that's only because as we stand in 2014, there's far more crime, far more violent crime coming out of the black community than there are other groups in, in society and we gave you those stats on our last show so disparities in police stops had nothing to do with it after all the officer did observe mike brown breaking the law walking down the middle of the street which is illegal so we had to stop him for that likewise are the cries of racism no oh, it's racism that he stopped mike brown no it's the fact that mike brown was breaking the law in front of a police officer is why he got stopped a lot of people have complained about the lack of diversity on the Ferguson police force there are uh, supposedly so many white folks on the police force yet there's so many black folks in the community but there again I don't see where that applies because the police officer in this case happening to be white saw Mike Brown who happens to be black walking down the middle of the road which is illegal so therefore he had to confront him about it what if the police officer had been black well if the police officer had been black I would have hoped the same exact thing would have happened. It darn sure should have. And if a black police officer would have let Mike Brown go by breaking the law right in front of him, that would say something pretty bad, wouldn't it? That, that would not be a good sign for where we're at in terms of police officers doling out justice. A lot of people blamed the lack of jobs, the lack of opportunity, the, and the poverty in Ferguson, Missouri for what happened to Mike Brown, but that doesn't have anything to do with it either. Did that force Mike Brown to go in there and steal those cigars or to walk down the middle of the street? No, they didn't. 
Now, there's some social scientists that will claim that it would, but I, I would offer you this. Yes, Ferguson, parts of it are, are pretty poor and pretty run down and have a, a certain lack of jobs and opportunity, as a lot of other places do. But I can take you to a lot of places in the state of Missouri, a lot of rural parts of Missouri that are just as poor, just as impoverished, and have just as little opportunity as Ferguson, Missouri does, and yet you don't see this, uh, this onslaught of crime and robbery and killing and attacking police officers and so forth. I can take you to these poor rural areas, and you will not see those people riot and loot anytime something doesn't go their way. I mean, think of something. For a lot of us, a lot of people that live in those poor rural areas, the election of Barack Obama to the presidency was to them every bit the tragedy that Mike Brown was to the people of Ferguson, and yet you didn't see any of those people rioting or looting or burning down businesses after Barack Obama got elected, did you? Absolutely not. So the poverty and the lack of opportunity obviously have nothing to do with it because there's plenty of rural places that have all the same lack of opportunity, lack of jobs, and so forth, and yet they don't act that way. People cry about police brutality. Well, pr police brutality does not apply because the officer was, by most accounts, in a physical struggle with Mike Brown. And I'm not aware of any law, I'm not aware of any statute that gives any citizen, black, white, yellow, green, or whatever, I'm not aware of any statute that gives any of us the right to fight back at a police officer. It does not give us any of us the right to punch a police officer or more or less to go for his gun. None of us have that right. If any of us try it, guess what? We're probably going to get shot dead, and we should. People complain about the militarization of the police and the use of tear gas and rubber bullets and all this. But there again, militarization of police and the weaponry they've got did not cause Mike Brown to go into that convenience store and steal those cigars. Militarization of the police did not cause Mike Brown to walk down the middle of the street instead of on the sidewalk on the side of the street like he's supposed to. That didn't cause any of it. In fact, the militarized police, so-called, were in my estimation downright nice in how they responded to the looting and the protesting. Yeah, they used tear gas and rubber bullets, and I thought after, after that first Sunday night, they should have used a lot more than just tear gas and rubber bullets. They should have used the real McCoy. They told people to disperse. They wouldn't do it. So they tried to get them to disperse, and yet we're going to criticize the police for enforcing their own orders. That doesn't make any sense. The actual cause of what happened in Ferguson and what continues to happen in Ferguson today boils down to this. Somebody committed a series of crimes one afternoon. That criminal attacked a police officer. And after the incident, a significant portion of that local community took the side of the criminal. That's it. That's what this is all about. And the biggest takeaway for me from Ferguson, and, and the saddest takeaway, the most shocking takeaway for me, is what seems to be a tolerance of crime among so many people. Not only those people in Ferguson who instantly came out to protest, but all those people who have come in from the outside to help them protest and loot and whatever. And even all the people you see on social media and Facebook and Twitter and so forth that stand up for Mike Brown. People that get so mad when you tell them that, yes, if a police officer, a police officer is attacked, he should shoot the assailant. I actually had someone on Twitter tell me that there should be a limit to the number of shots a police officer can use to defend himself. So like if you attack a police officer and he shoots at you three times and, 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 you, and he misses, then he's under some kind of obligation to let you kill him. How asinine is that? But that is where a significant amount of our population are today. It's not just a racial thing. I've, I, I've had more arguments with white folks over Mike Brown and over Ferguson than I have black folks. There's a lot of people out there that are very twisted about this whole thing. A lot of people out there that are more concerned about violence towards a criminal than they are about violence towards those who protect us and our property. What's down is up and up is down. It's crazy to me. The bottom line is this, and this is going to make some people very uncomfortable, but the truth is the truth. I don't believe that at the end of the day, this police officer killed Mike Brown. Or at least I don't believe he's the cause for Mike Brown's death. We'll put it that way. He pulled the trigger, but I don't believe he's the reason Mike Brown is dead. Because at the end of the day, 
Mike Brown killed Mike Brown. I say that because it was the actions of that young man, Mike Brown, that led to the situation that got him killed. He got himself killed. He could have avoided all of it. He could have not robbed that liquor store. He could have walked on the side of the street like the law says you're supposed to. But he broke the law multiple times. And as far as I'm concerned, if you break the law, whatever happens to you happens. We should have zero sympathy for anybody that would do that. In closing, I'm reminded of a song I used to hear back in my childhood, back in Sunday school class. And even if you don't believe in Christian theology, I would say the life lesson in this song is a very valuable one for all of us. There was a song that basically said, be careful little feet where you go. Be careful little ears what you hear. Be careful little eyes what you see. The point of the song was that it's not simply enough in life to just try not to break the rules. Instead, your standard should be to not even allow yourself to, to be in a situation where you could even be tempted to go off the straight and narrow. To not even, it's, it's not enough to say, oh, I'm not going to rob a bank. You shouldn't even engage in friendships with people who would consider robbing banks. It's not enough for you to say, I won't do drugs. You should not even associate with people who would do drugs. And the list goes on and on of examples. That at the end of the day, you are always responsible for the situation you find yourself in, even if you never intended to be in that situation. In other words, if you go off the straight and narrow, if you tempt fate just a little bit, you can find yourself in situations that you lose control of. But yet it's our responsibility to always be in control of all of our situations at all times. Did Mike Brown's situation with that police officer escalate? Yes, it did. But had he not engaged in any of those crimes that day, there would never have been a situation to escalate in the first place. Be careful, little hands, what you do. Those little hands stole cigars. They shouldn't have done that. Be careful, little feet, where you go. Those feet walk down the middle of the street illegally. And had that not happened, Mike Brown would still be with us today. That's it for this week. This is America's Evil Genius. We will see you next time.